We are now coming to the one year anniversary of the bloodbath and the genocide that continues to unfold in Gaza. What we've witnessed over the last 12 months is the Zionist savagery where children have been massacred According to some estimations, 7.5% of the population of Gaza have been killed, have been martyred. What we've seen is the hypocrisy of some of the Muslim nations. And for all of us, we are an ummah of close to 2 billion Muslims. Yet we can do nothing. How will history judge us that we lived in a time when our Muslim brothers were massacred in this way and we continued with our lives? As normal. We practically did nothing to change the situation. So this anniversary that we're coming towards, 12 months that have passed, is significant. When you look at the figures, on average, 53 children have been killed every day. 72 men and women have been killed every day. And anniversaries are important for us to reflect on because it comes at the time of the 107th year since Baytul Muqaddas. Masjid al-Aqsa was lost to the Islamic Khilafat. And it also comes at the time of the 76th year having passed since Zionist gangs have depopulated 78% of Palestine at the time of the Nakba. So we have to ask ourselves, you know, how have we reached this point? What introspection are we going to do? The hadith of the Messenger وسلم, is Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Hold yourself account before you are held account. By for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wazinu anfusakum qabla an tuzanu. And evaluate yourselves before you are evaluated before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Muslims, we know that we are part of a brotherhood. Al Muslimu akhul Muslim. A Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. La yadlimuhu. He does not oppress him. Wala yuslimuhu. Nor does he hand him over to the enemy. Man kana fi hajit akhihi, kana Allah fi hajatihi. He who is out in the need of his brother, Allah is taking care of his need. Wa man farraja an muslimin kurbatan, farraja Allah anhu biha kurbatan min kurabi yawm al qiyamah. And whoever alleviates from a Muslim among the difficulties of this world, Allah will alleviate for him from the difficulties of the yawm, of the day of Qiyamah. وَمَنْ سَتْرَهُ And whoever covers the faults of a Muslim, سَتَرَ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah will cover his faults on the day of Qiyamah. What have we done in this regard? In a document that has been prepared, 649 pages, giving a detailed account of the 34,000 martyrs of Palestine, from the 7th of October 2023 to the 31st of August 2024. The name, the age, the gender and the ID number of every martyr is provided. The first 14 pages are for those who are between the ages of 0 and 1. Another 11 pages are dedicated to those between the ages of 77 and 101. So this is 34,000 
that have been documented. Lancet has indicated that there may be up to 184,000 that have been martyred in the one year. And that is where we come to the figure of 7,9% of the population of Gaza have been martyred. When you look at the, on the ground, 70% of buildings have been flattered. And the rate of damage that has been witnessed in Gaza, that some of the academics have said that, you know, it has, the northern part of Gaza has witnessed the destruction that was worse than what has been witnessed at the time of World War II. Israel has dropped six times more bombs on Gaza as compared to the atomic bomb that was dropped by the U.S. on Hiroshima in 1945. Israel has dropped six times more than what the U.S. had done at Hiroshima in 1945. When we look at the situation on the ground, 83% of the required aid is not making itself or its way into Gaza. Those who were accustomed to having two meals a day at minimum are now having one meal every second or third day. One million women are now without hygiene supplies they need. Only 1,500 beds in Gaza hospitals remain. So you have a situation of 1,87 million people that are in need of shelter, that have been displaced. Only 25,000 people have been given tents. The rest are without shelter. And as the result of this one year of savagery on Gaza, from an academic point of view and from an Islamic fic point of view, what we've witnessed, and just to give us an insight from a different angle, we found the people of Gaza asking the Muftis Masail as to how do you, does one deal with an amputated limb with regards to wudu, with regards to ghusl? This is one of the questions that have come up from them. They've asked about burying several martyrs in one grave. They've asked about who becomes the guardian of a child who has lost his or her entire family. They've asked about what happens to a person who has fasted the entire day and has nothing for iftar and then wants to fast the next day. What is the status of that person's fast and how do they go about continuing with that fast? How do you distribute the inheritance amongst the heirs of those who were killed with one bomb blast? What is the position of a lady whose husband is unknown, whether he's passed on or he's in some other refugee camp, is she still married or has she become widowed or divorced? These are some of the Masail that the people of Gaza have been inquiring about. And what we should remember also is that the entire situation that came about on the 6th of October last year was as a result of an effort to protect Masjid al-Aqsa. Nabi Sallallahu was asked, Ayyuma Avdal, what is better? Salah in Masjid al-Nabawi or Salah in Masjid al-Aqsa? The second or the third holiest place. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Salah in Masjid al-Nabawi is four times greater than Salah in Masjid al-Aqsa. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there will soon time, a time come for a man to have land equivalent to his horse's rope 
from which he can see Masjid Al-Aqsa will be better for him than this entire world. So people say that, why don't they just leave? Going to Egypt, let the entire world just take a portion of the population. This is sacred land. This is blessed land. Barakna hawlahu. Allah Rabbul Izzah says that we have granted blessings in the presence of this land. And they are the ones that have embarked on this campaign to protect Masjid al-Aqsa. What we see is that the desecration of Masjid al-Aqsa and the open proclamation of building the Temple Mount on Masjid al-Aqsa. We see the agitation towards the Jewish settlers breeding the red haifas and also, you know, daily incursions and to such an extent that those who have been going in to Masjid al-Aqsa and violating the sanctity of the Masjid, they have been granted special aid. At the same time, while what is unfolding in Gaza has unfolded, we also have the West Bank where there's been seizure of land. In the last 12 months, the amount of land that has been seized by Israeli squatters, settlers, invaders, equals to 23 square kilometers. And this is more land that they had taken than in the last 20 years. So it gives us an indication as to what has been unfolding on the other side. When we look at it in the, from the spiritual perspective and how they've continued in this regard, Allah Rabbul Izzah says, وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And for those who deny our signs, we shall lead them step by step to their ruin. And this is the concept of istidraj. Istidraj is where the wrongdoer is not punished by Allah. In fact, the wrongdoer gains greater momentum in the evil. And this leads them to committing further crimes and further violations. And they are then blinded by any sort of sense of sense of guilt. And they continue. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, فَأَمَّا aadun, As for the Aad, they began boasting. Who is stronger than us? Allah Rabbul Izzah says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ Do they not see that Allah is the one who created them? Allah is more powerful than them. But they negated the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah allows this concept to unfold where the oppressor gets deluded by their total grandeur and then when the punishment of Allah comes, it comes suddenly. When we look at the situation, many ask, why is Allah allowing this to happen? Why doesn't Allah just stop the suffering of the people of Palestine? We as believers analyze and put things into perspective from an akhirat centric lens. We look at the bigger picture. We look at it from the concept that our destination is the akhirat. And that we all are on this journey towards the Akhirat. And that our lives in this world is transitory and temporary. And for us to leave this world as a martyr, for us to leave this world with firm belief that, that is our ultimate salvation, that is our ultimate goal, and to reach the Akhirat with our Iman intact, 
that is what we are all striving for. And this, what is unfolding, affords those in Palestine that great opportunity. Abdul Aziz ibn Abdul Salam, who has written a book called Fawaidul Balwa Wal Mihan, the benefits of difficult circumstances, difficult conditions, has enlisted that when you experience individually or as a collective conditions in this world, then there are certain benefits that come from that. When circumstances that unfold, it reminds us, it is a means of Allah Rabbul Izzah demonstrating that it is Allah alone that is all-powerful. It reminds us that we as the servants of Allah, we are weak. It becomes a means of enhancing our sincerity and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It gives us the opportunity to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua and in repentance. It presents us with the opportunity to exercise patience. It provides us with the opportunity to assist those who are in distress. We are able to appreciate the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we enjoy on a daily basis. And it reminds us of the great rewards that await us in the akhirah if we remain patient and we remain perseverant. So what is unfolding, what may seem as adversity, which may seem as total destruction, yet it is Fatham Mubina at the time of the conquest of Makkah al Mukarramah. Before that, there was the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, where the Muslims had come out to perform Umrah. And at that time, they were told, no, you cannot perform Umrah now. They are to return. And all those from the Muslimin who had escaped from the Kuffar in Makkah al Mukarramah and come to the Muslims, they were to be returned to the Kuffar. It was a very difficult time. It was adverse consequences. Yet Allah Rabbul Izzah revealed verses at that time saying, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. That we've granted you a clear victory. The victory was what was to come afterwards. That was the victory. In the present situation, it seemed as though there was no victory. And what is unfolding now, in Gaza, there is certainly a victory to come. When you look at it, that what are the benefits that have come from the situation, the true colors of freedom, of liberation, uh, that will come to us, inshallah, one day. The Palestinian issue has been brought onto the center stage of the world as a result of what has happened. There was a movement towards normalization in certain parts of the world in the Middle East. And that has been discredited now. What you've seen is that amongst the masses of the Muslim Ummah, a unity that has come about that was not there before. The spirit of striving for the sake of Allah and the martyrdom that has unfolded and people's desire for it has been unprecedented. And we've seen that many non-Muslims in different parts of the world have been inspired by the courage by the resilience of the Palestinian people. And they look at them and they ask, you know, how can these people be so resolute? It has to be a deep-rooted belief and faith that can drive such a people. And there have been people that have accepted Islam as a result of this. So at this juncture of the one-year anniversary of what has transpired in Gaza, there are many things that we can reflect on. We need to continue with our dua. We should not just think of it as one of the situations that are unfolding, but rather keep this foremost on our mind. Reflect on how the people of Gaza have suffered and the benefits that have come from this. And we need to also keep this issue alive in every aspect of our lives. May Allah Rabbul Izzah bring ease to the people of Gaza. May Allah alleviate their suffering May Allah bring ease to the Muslim Ummah. May Allah defeat the enemies. 
May Allah destroy them like how He has destroyed the nations of the past. May it be that in our lifetime, we witness the liberation of Masjid Al-Aqsa and the destruction of the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.